Hi guys, today I'm going to show you how to upgrade the runtime software image on your Cisco wireless LAN controller. Uh, before I go into the process though, I'd like to say that you should definitely read the release notes on the Cisco website before you install any software. There are certain uh, caveats and perhaps even bugs, I know that sounds a bit silly, um, because why would Cisco release new software with there to be bugs in it? Um, but it does happen. Um, there are bugs within new software. Um, it may even be that the new software release discontinues support for the AP model that you have. Uh, another example is uh, in the new 7.5 software, if you have a uh, high, avail high availability setup, um, the software you, the new software you install may not always copy across to both controllers. So it leaves one with a new release and the other, and that's obviously not good in a high availability setup. Um, also, one other thing to mention is that there are two software platforms that run on the controller. Um, I like to call them the, the board software and the runtime software. So the board software meaning like motherboard software that runs the internal components and the system level processes. Um, and the so. Runtime software is what you interact with, so what I'm interacting with here, this is obviously the, the software image that makes this possible, this GUI possible, and all the networking processes that go on, you know, the wireless LANs, all your configuration, all the configuration you do here is to do with the uh, runtime image. Um, and the board level image is called the field recovery image version, so you can see here, so we've got the main software image, which is the runtime, and then you've got the field recovery image version. Um, yeah, so onto the process of actually upgrading your controller. So first what you're going to want to do is you will need to go to the Cisco website and obviously download the software that you want. You obviously need a valid support contract to do that. Um, and while you're there, read the release notes. You're then going to want to install open your TFTP server. Uh, I'm running uh, TFTP 64, TFTP D 64 rather. Uh, set your TFTP server up, make sure you've got the right root directory and your point you're using the right server interface. Um, you're then going to want to, like, so depending on what you want to upgrade, the software, the main software image or the field recovery image version, you're going to either want to come into the GUI or open up an SSH uh, session. So you, you can actually upgrade the main software image from the GUI or SSH or you know a, a terminal session um, but the field recovery image actually requires you to open a terminal session. It, you can't do it from the GUI or that like, you weren't able to previously anyway. Um, and I think that's still the case. So for this video I'm just gonna go I'm just gonna upgrade the main software image um, so we can do that in the GUI but I'll, I will show you from the, the uh, ter from a terminal session. Okay, so what you want to do once you've logged in, if you come over to commands and you've got these options down the side, so download file means download file to controller, so download file from your workstation to the controller. A lot of people get confused about that, I don't know why it says it, you know, it sort of says it there. Um, upload file obviously means upload file from, I, I can, you know, I can sort of see why it does, doesn't make sense, it means you'd probably click upload file to upload it to the controller, you know, um, but that actually means upload file from controllers, if you wanted to back up the configuration or whatever, you can come here and back up the configuration, blah, blah, blah. So we want, we're concerned with um, download files controller. So what we're going to do is enter your IP address of your workstation, uh, don't worry about them, you can leave them as it is. File path, if you've got, um, if it's not located in the subdirectory in your TFTP route, you can just leave that as a forward slash. And then obviously we want the file name, which is, if I just go into my TFTP route, um, and I'm going to want to, I want, that one, 7.5, so if I click that, and then highlight all of that, you need the dot .aes as well, and um, you can't just do the, like, the sort of file name, you need the extension on the end of it. Uh, so if I put that in there, and just make sure that I've got network connection, yes, so that should go, so click download, and yes, we want to do that. 
could say starting CFTP code transfer. And then what you'll get is a number of other things like um, writing to RTOS disk, um, upgrading BIOS or something like that. Something like that. So we can see the uh, process happening now in TFTP D64. And we can see that the file's been copied. So we'll just wait for that. So it's copied the files to the disk now. You can see it going through different stages. So writing the RTOS to flash disk. Um, it'll write the any file to disk, things like that. Um, so I'm just going to quickly pause the video and let that take that, that process take its course, and then I'll come back when it's done. Okay, so the software has now been fully installed, and once you once it has, you'll get this message: file transfer is success, successful. Reboot the controller for the update to complete. Um, so that whole process probably takes about five six minutes um, for it once it's copied to install. So what you'll need to do is obviously reboot. So it's important to note that um, in production environments, if you've got a uh, software upgrade to do, uh, you'll need to inform obviously your place of work that your the wireless LAN controller will be going offline, um, and also the access points. The a once the uh, controller reboots and comes up again, the access points will then download the new software from the controller. And obviously they will then need to reboot as well. So the whole process can take sometimes up to about 30, 30 minutes. Um, obviously depending on how many access points you've got, it could take up, you know, to an hour. Um, but uh, I'm just going to reboot the uh, wireless controller now. So I'm just going to pause the video again and I'll be back. Okay, so the uh, wireless controller is booted up now. And we can see that the software image, software version has been upgraded to 7.5102. So what I'm going to show you now is how you can do the same thing but using SSH. And just to remind you, this is how you upgrade also the field recovery image version because you can't do it through the GUI. So I'm just going to log into the controller via terminal session via SSH. Okay, so the command for, let me just make this a little bit bigger, uh, the command for transferring files to the controller from the command line is transfer, would you believe it, download, and then there are a number of options, a number of parameters. So if we first fill out the server IP, which is of course the workstation IP, as we did in the GUI, uh, so 102168, What's in soon. And then we say the path, which is of course just forward slash or just sorry to transfer download path. That. Then we're going to want to specify the part, the file name, which was that with the AES as well, the dot AES. Um, and then the data type, so transfer download data type to tell you what type and it's just code. So now we're ready to kick it off. All that command is transfer download start. Uh, I'm not going to do it because obviously I've just upgraded the controller to the new software. Um, but that's that is the process using SSH. And um, hope you found the video helpful and useful and um, stay tuned for the next